Hello and welcome to my podcast. I'm Jessica and this is a podcast all about knitting. I'm pretty excited I get to podcast today. My uh, little boy who's only three months old has not been napping at all and it's been it's been a struggle this week. I've probably spent something like eight hours every single day just just trying to get him to nap and he finally napped in his bed today and yesterday and a teeny tiny bit the day before so I am just <laughs> feeling pretty good right now so I've dumped all the kids on my husband so now I can uh, show you what I have been working on since the last time I was here which um, I've got some stuff that's not entirely seasonally appropriate since it's now the middle of January but since the last time I recorded I finished Aiden's Christmas stocking so I thought I would talk about it here so here's Aiden. I finished it two days before Christmas, which gave me enough time to block it just in time for Christmas. And so I was pretty happy with that. I was a little worried I was gonna have to like leave a note for Santa. Please forgive this unfinished stocking, but I didn't have to. So all of the stockings for all of the kids are kind of the same basic, um, same basic thing. I did not use a pattern for any of these. I found a free stocking pattern on Ravelry. This was a few years ago that I started them off. And it was just a striped one. I really don't remember which one I followed. If I can find it, I, I'll put a link to it. But it's just a basic free striped Christmas stocking pattern. And so I took that and it was for 56 stitches, but I decided to do 60 stitches. For each of them because I wanted to be able to do charts that had a 10 stitch repeat so each of these are cast on with 60 stitches and then it's basically just a sock so here's Aiden's all of them have trees in them somewhere and the boys have some sort of reindeer in them and the girls have stars so here's Jimmy's he's got a different reindeer pattern Eight, for Aiden's, I did some of my middle pieces with red and green, which required three color knitting. On the other stockings, I didn't do that because I wasn't brave enough to do three color knitting. So Talia's and Jimmy's are just two colors. Britta's has three colors in it, but I only ever did two colors at a time. But Aiden got the benefit of a more experienced mom so I've got a couple of spots where you did two colors together which I really like my favorite ones are the ones that have red and green together but obviously I'm not going to go back and remake them all now one thing I really don't like about this is this the gusset is just completely white when I started them I didn't have the experience to know any better really so I just did a big white gusset <laughs> and I considered doing a short row heel on Aiden's stocking just so that I would have it just, you know, a, a green heel and then the color work would continue in here. But I decided that for the sake of, you know, making everybody's stocking look kind of the same kind of match, then I would just do what I'd done on the other four. So. Here's the stocking. Done barely in time. All of the charts I just found on Pinterest mostly or elsewhere on the internet. I think this one's a cross stitch pattern. This one might also be a cross stitch pattern. I'm not entirely sure. I know the girls' stars are um, some Norwegian star motifs. So I just found charts for patterns I liked and used them. Yeah, and then the, the name is Duplicate Stitched On, which is actually a lot of fun to do, the duplicate stitch for the name. And I think that's also a cross stitch chart that I found for the name. So, there's my first finished object, Christmas stockings. 
So we've got four Christmas stockings, one for each kid now, so that's, that's good. I don't think I'll ever make another Christmas stocking until maybe I have grandkids. Then another bit of pre-Christmas knitting was I made my husband some socks for Christmas. He is very difficult to buy for. He always says he's very easy to buy for because he will tell you literally what to buy and he'll just even send you the link and everything and so he says he's really easy to buy for but that's not always a lot of fun to just let him pick out his own present and then just buy it. So I decided to surprise him with my very first pair of adult sized socks. So. I did not have them done for Christmas. He got a sock and a half for Christmas, and then I finished it like two days after Christmas. So, yeah. These are the Rye Socks by um, Tin Can Knits. It's a free pattern, and it has a uh, garter stitch panel down the front, but for the sake of speed, I just did all stockinette because, because I was kind of crunched for time. So, yeah, my first socks. I used a cheaper yarn on this. I used Knit Picks Simply Wool Worsted Weight. I'll show you the tag if you want to see it. I don't know if you care or not. Anyway, this is their Eco Wool. I'm pretty sure it's not dyed. I'm pretty sure it's just um, the natural color of the fiber, but I'm not sure on that. I did think it was a pretty nice yarn. It's got a little bit of prickle in it when I hold it against my neck, but it's not too bad. I tried it on my feet and it's not itchy at all on my feet, so I'd say it's not a bad yarn if you're looking for a cheaper yarn. One thing about it though is it seems to be really dirty. Every time I wash these socks, even the first time I wash these socks, the water is just completely brown. It's kind of kind of gross honestly that they're so it's just so dirty and so I wonder if maybe they didn't um, wash the fleeces very much or maybe it is dyed and it's just the dye bleeding off I'm not sure but anyway I'll just keep washing them I guess so socks those are my first adult socks I've ever made I'm kind of gotten obsessed with socks now I actually bought a sock pattern um, a few weeks ago, so I may make myself some socks. I would have sworn a while ago that I'm not a sock knitter, but anyway, there we are. Socks. Even more socks. These are socks for Aiden. This is the perfect newborn sock pattern worked in a sport weight yarn and I did a short row heel on it just for fun, just to try it out. Um, I just googled how to do a short row heel. On this one I got kind of lazy and stopped picking up the wraps over here. And it also had a big hole here where it joins together so I don't know. I was kind of disappointed in, in how well I did. On this one this was the first one I did then on the next one that I did I didn't have as big of holes but there's still little holes there so yeah little socks for Aiden one thing about these is they do not stay on his feet at all they just always fall down I'm pretty sure it's because the heel is so small because I don't think there's enough room in the heel for his foot so it just kind of pulls the whole sock down and off so they don't fit very well, but at least he had some little socks that matched his little sweater I made for him. So they're the same yarn, so he has matching socks to go with his sweater. So. Anyway, he still wears these even if they fall off. I just don't um, let him wear them out of the house because I don't want to lose them somewhere. So he just wears them inside. Here's his sweater. The socks are to match. This is Sweet Sage. It is a little textured yoke baby sweater. It's made out of sport weight yarn. It's Quince & Co. Chickadee in the colorway Sage, in case you wanted to know that. This pattern will be coming out in a couple of weeks from now, so the end of February. 
not the end of February, the end of January. Um, so this is, this is coming right up. I worked on finalizing the pattern last night, just last night. It's got textures in the yoke, so there's some moss stitch here, and then this leaf motif, and then just little zigzags. And it's all just knit pearl texture, so it's very simple and easy to do, and it looks really cute. This is actually one of my favorite little outfits to put him in, is this little green sweater gray pants or some little baby jeans and those matching socks. It is really cute. I really like it. I'm very happy with it. Of course it certainly doesn't help that this is my favorite color, green. I really like green. So yeah, got this coming out in a couple of weeks. So if you want to make sure you don't miss the release for this sweater, then you can sign up for my newsletter. I'll put the link down below. It's it's really simple to make, it's really easy. I've written the um, yoke instructions out and there's also a chart so you can pick if you wanna follow the written instructions or the chart depending on which one you prefer. I had some test knitters do um, the chart and some do the written um, instructions and both of them worked out well. The testers love this one. A couple of them have told me it's gonna be their go-to pattern for baby knits, so that's really, I really like I really like it when people tell me things like that. It makes me feel um, really good. So it's, it's the ultimate compliment when somebody's gonna make my pattern twice, you know, because they loved it so much the first time. It's just makes me very happy to hear that. So I'm glad I'm writing patterns that people really love. So yes, I think I'll put this on him this afternoon. He has already worn it, um, but I washed it uh, earlier this week and I was kind of keeping it clean so that, so that in case I was able to podcast this weekend I could show it off instead of, you know, just with spit up all over it, which I was sure you didn't want to see. So, yeah, it's super cute, it's super duper cute. That's Sweet Sage by me. Oh, speaking of sweater patterns that um, you can buy. This sweater is now, the pattern is now available. It was originally in Making Stories September collection, but now I have the individual rights back to it, so it's in my Ravelry store. It's called Snowland, and it's, it's my favorite sweater, honestly. You can see it's a top-down contiguous sweat and sleeve. Super easy to do, actually. Fits really nice. Sits on my shoulders really nice. It is a really nice cardigan. I really love it. I wanted to make, when I designed this sweater, I wanted to make something that you could just wear with anything all day, every day, look fantastic, and I think I succeeded. I wear it all the time. Really, really like this sweater. So, you can go check it out. I'll put a link down below if you wanted to go look at this sweater. It's, it's fantastic. Oh, no, I have another, well, half of a finished object, maybe? Another sock? <laughs> another sock. This is the um, perfect newborn pattern, sock pattern. It's a free pattern, by the way. Um, I'll put a link to it down below, but it's a free pattern. And in finger, it's written for, written for fingering weight yarn, and I made it in fingering weight yarn, and it is a perfect newborn sock. But I did this in a sport weight, um, so it's about a uh, six month size. He's in six month size right now and it fits him pretty perfect. So I also made the cuff half an inch longer, so it's a two and a half inch cuff. I think the pattern has two inches for the cuff. So I knit this sock and, I, and you can see I learned my lesson and I did the heel flap and gusset. So there's a lot more room in the heel in this sock. So I expect it to stay on a lot better compared to this one, because you can see, you know, there's a lot less room in this one versus this one. This one's stretched out because he's worn it already, and this one, the ribbing is still nice and uh, nice and springy because he hasn't worn it yet. But I expect him to be able to wear this one a lot better because it's got the heel flapping gusset, so it should fit on his foot a lot better. 
So this is Quincy Co. Chickadee as well. This is their um, Organic Heathers. This is Iceland, color Iceland. It's so soft and fuzzy. I don't know if you can see the fuzziness, but it's got a really nice little halo to it. Maybe if I come over here. Can you see it? Just a little bit? Maybe not. Anyway, it's really fuzzy. I guess not as fuzzy as like alpaca or mohair or anything, but it's a it's got a nice little halo to it. So the thing is, with this yarn, I had bought three skeins of Iceland and one skein of sage, and I was gonna do a color work sweater with sage as the contrast color and Iceland as the main color, but it didn't work because they're basically the same color value, so the contrast of the color work wasn't enough. The motif just disappeared into nothing because the colors are too close. So I had to scrap that idea. And then I came up with the textured yoke of Sweet Sage, this, and I thought, oh, I'll just knit that up in the gray yarn because I have a whole sweater quantity of the gray yarn. And so I went and I started into that. Of course I didn't swatch because, I mean, a baby sweater is basically a swatch. So I got into the yoke and I looked at it and you really couldn't see the texture. You really couldn't see the pattern at all because this yarn is really fussy. So it was just obscuring the pattern. So I was scrapped that one and I was like, well, I'll just start it with my one skein of green, of sage, and see how that works out. And I really liked it, so I had to order more yarn and made that one in green. And then I still had a sweater quantity of gray and I didn't want it to go to waste. Well, you know, a baby sweater quantity of gray. But I didn't want it to go to waste and just have three skeins of yarn sitting around. So I am making him another little sweater. Kind of in the middle of a side here. So this one is top down in the round, round yoke. Um, just, I'm like, what? Two thirds of the way through the yoke now. So it's just gonna be a very, very simple sweater. I've actually written the pattern for this already and I've written it from size three months, which this is the six month size, but I've written it from size three months all the way to a 70 inch finished chest circumference. So this will be a pattern that will be for literally everybody. So this is the baby one. That one's gonna be a long time coming because I have to, you know, make mine. So this is the baby one. I decided to quickly write the pattern. I've had this idea for a little while, but I decided to quickly write the pattern so that I could knit up Aiden's little sweater and um, have that done because I don't have enough yarn to make something much bigger than a six or 12 month size. And he needs a sweater right now. He's just outgrowing absolutely everything. So I decided I would make him the six month size and I'm gonna add a little bit of length to the body and sleeves because all my kids are just tall and skinny. So I'm just gonna add some length to it and um, have another little sweater and then I will make my own sample for the adult size in the future. I'm trying to decide if I want to make mine gray or green. I really don't know what color I'm going to make it. I mean, it's well, not going to be one of those two, but I can't pick gray or green. So I'm, I'm a bit indecisive right now. So I've got to, I've got to pick a color and pick a yarn. And I think I want to do mine as a fingering weight held together with mohair. So it comes out the same gauge as a sport weight, but we'll see. So I'm trying to trying to decide what I want to do there. So it's kind of fun to think about because it's just, there's no patterning. So the yarn is going to be the star. So I had to stop and restart because my um, camera only records for 20 minutes and then it stops. So I'm going to stop and restart. So anyway, gray or green, what color should I do? I could do gray and match Aiden, 
But of course he's gonna be out of it by the time my sweater is done, so it's not really gonna matter. But I'll have to uh, make up my mind pretty soon. If you hear that, don't worry about it. <laughs> Daddy's in charge, don't worry about it. Um, yeah, so there's my, it's one of my whips, a little sweater for Aiden. I've got another whip that I've been working on for pretty much as long as Aiden's been alive. I started this a few weeks after he was born. This is another pattern I have coming out pretty soon. I've shown this to you before, I'm pretty sure. A bloom. Got a sleeve about two thirds done. So and it needs the other sleeve. So the body's done. Just need to finish the sleeves. This one's coming out at the end of February, beginning of March, sometime in there. So I have a little bit of time before I have to have it done, but I need to get working on it because I have um, yarn for another sweater that I can't tell you about yet, but I've got yarn for another sweater that I need to get started and I've got more yarn coming for another fun sweater that I can't tell you about yet. I've got a couple of collaborations for this year that I'm really excited for and are going to be really fun to do and to show you, so you'll have to look forward to that in a future episode. But for right now, this is my other whip. A bloom. It's going to be really nice for um, in a couple of months when it's starting to get warmer, but it's still not warm. Um, so it'll be really nice. Very pretty. It's very springy. Very nice. So, this is Quince & Co. Finch. Um, the colors are Outerwin. I'm not sure. I'm never sure if I'm pronouncing that right. The main color is Outerwin. It's there. It's a kind of an oatmeal-y heathered oatmeal color. It's really pretty. I like it. It's really warm. It's a nice warm, neutral, warm and light color, neutral, and then bird's egg for the contrast color for the flowers. So, um, I made this for the girls first. So this, if you're looking for a children's version of this, you can already find this, but this is my adult version, so. Gotta get those sleeves done. I actually really like sleeve knitting. I know a lot of people don't like sleeve knitting, but I actually really like it because I mean, it's just so simple. And you just go round and round and round. Yeah. It's perfect for like TV knitting or car knitting or knitting while holding a sleeping baby knitting. It's fantastic. So there's my whips and that is everything I have to show you. Unless I forgot something, but I don't think that I did. So that's all of my knitting to show you for now. Make sure this is still focused. So yeah. I'm very happy that I managed to get a podcast reported because I mean this week has just been insane. I've barely managed to make dinner most days. It's a lot easier when the baby is one month old and just sleeps all the time. This age where they actually fight naps and they don't want to sleep, it's just really hard. So we will survive though. I've done it three times before. So I know how it goes. I know how it goes. So anyway, um, thank you for watching. If you made it this far, thank you for watching my podcast. If you like this, you can subscribe to my channel. I'll put information for where you can find me down below in the show notes in the description box and I'll put information for if you want to sign up for my newsletter. Make sure you don't miss any of my new patterns coming out and uh, thank you for watching. Bye!